ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. You know, something like this will be a very low point in my career, uh, you know, having lost, uh, you know, three games at home. That is India skipper Rohit Sharma speaking off the back of a historic series loss to New Zealand. Think about how big a deal it is when we win just one test in India. So for that nation to be swept by the Black Caps 3-0, that is enormous. First time in their history enormous. This was meant to be a primer for a generational clash with Australia. Instead, the captain's under pressure, the coach is under fire. What's going on with cricket's not-so-superpower and what does it mean for the impending series down under? I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily. Prakash Rakanka is an Indian cricket commentator. You've probably heard his work over the journey on our broadcast between India and Australia test matches. Prakash, when Australia wins a test in India, people here are super excited. So to see the Kiwis sweep India 3-0, we're jealous. How and why were the hosts so thoroughly outplayed in what was an enthralling three-match series? Well, I think that's a that's a billion people asking that question here at home. Uh, because it's it's never happened, as you all know. Yeah. And it's all over. It's New Zealand. They've blanked out India in a test series and created absolute history. India have never actually lost a three-test series 3-0. And that too, so comprehensively. I mean, the Mumbai test came close, but in any event, I think the domination of the Kiwis began on that uh, cloudy morning in Bangalore. Another brilliant catch. New Zealand have been sensational in the field today. And this is another beauty and India have been bowled out for 46. And it just continued through the series. So it's a, it's a matter where I think uh, everyone's going to need some serious introspection, particularly the Indian batters, particularly the senior pros in the team. Uh, the nature of pitches being made, does that make not so great spinners look unplayable? What's happened to the famous Indian batting ability to face spin? Yeah! And he's cleaned him up. Kept a little low, but uh, crashed into off stump. The second best figures by a New Zealander in India, Mitchell Santner. Seven for 53. What a spell of bowling it's been. That seems to have gone out of the window with a lot of white ball cricket and flat decks. So there's, there's a multitude of reasons. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to what was playing in the minds of people who were out there, the 11 blokes who were on the park. And I think India have some serious homework to do before they, they start the Border Gavaskar series in Perth in a few weeks' time. Before we get to the homework, can you help us understand recriminations from an Australian audience perspective? What's been the scope of the fallout in India right now? Well, you know, India, as you know, is a a country of hero worship. We elevate sports people, cricketers in particular, to very lofty levels very, very quickly. Please welcome number 18, Virat Kohli. And when you had people like Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli, who have indeed performed so well over a long period of time, there is, I think, a set of mixed emotions. You don't want to go too hard, but you also realize that uh, you've got to say what you want to say. The social media has been abuzz with two kinds of broad reactions. One, just get rid of these guys and let's move on with a younger lot. Doesn't matter if they lose. At least we are preparing for the future. Lots of them are talking about the fact that Both Virat and Rohit have chosen to be away from the game for long periods of time, purely for personal reasons. And while one respects the privacy of those decisions, the question is, can you really dictate irrespective of who you are? Is someone bigger than the game? Those are the kind of uh, queries or questions being raised from a negative point of view. From a positive perspective, I think people are saying, look, these things happen. Yes, they shouldn't have happened thrice in a row. Uh, Yes, the the ability is still there. Teams don't go from being champion sides to absolute losers overnight. So it's an aberration. It had to come. Transition from a senior ageing team to a younger side is got to begin now. The WTC cycle ends for India after the Australia series. And really, where do we go from here? Gautam Gambhir, I think, is copping his share of flack. Uh, Some of it justified, some not so. 
particularly his comment of saying our ability to play spin has not diminished. Yes, ultimately it's the results that matter when you're playing international cricket, but I don't think so that that uh, a skill against spin has, has actually gone down. I think it's about probably keep working hard and keep getting better. Those kind of things are spurring a lot of reactions and Indians, of course, are argumentative by nature. So there's loads of debate, private and public, that is... Uh, captivated the audience. I think the US presidential election may have taken just a little bit of a backseat for the moment in this country. Nothing bigger than cricket in India, not even the US elections. Uh, Gautam Gambhir, tell me about the coach. Is there a prospect that he doesn't make it to Australia if we're going to go the extreme reaction route? No, I can't see that. I can't see that happening. Look, the team was announced before the third test began. Some people may now be wondering whether that was a smart call or not. But knowing how how cricket has played out, it's always possible India are already carrying about three travelling reserves. The India A team is in Australia at the moment. Will they choose to retain a couple of blokes there and just have them stay back? Uh, Will it be uh, an extended squad like it was last time around because of COVID and other reasons? But I can't see any fundamental change happening either to the coaching staff or to the squad uh, now that it has already been announced. Uh, It'll be a miracle if that happens and then they'll have to find a way to justify that through injury or other reasons. No, Gambhir will coach the side and his staff will follow. I think Rohit Sharma will be captain. Bumrah will be vice captain. How it all pans out, only time will tell over the next few months. It was interesting to see Rohit Sharma in particular. You know, you talk about hero worship in this series, just looking utterly bereft of form with the bat. Oh, absolute Jaffa. Was I saying that Tim Sadi will get a token one over? No. He got rid of Rohit Sharma in that first test match. He does it again. Right through his defence this time. Is this the most pressure that he's been under in what is an illustrious career? I would imagine when someone like Rohit Sharma, the one thing about that guy is he's always owned up. I think it was it was very, uh, very good of him, very strong of him mentally to stand up and actually own up, including saying, look, I think I'm not trusting my defense enough. My defense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't defended a lot in the series uh, because I haven't been there much. To defend, but yeah, clearly I have to look at my own game. Yeah, I, I think Rohit Sharma is under humongous amount of pressure, as is Virat Kohli, as are a few others. But I think these two will, as they have carried the accolades for so long, will will be the recipient of a few brick bats unless they can turn this around quickly. You mentioned the sort of choice of players, key name players around when they do or don't play. Is there any suggestion around Jasper at Boomer and his non-performance or the, the fact that he didn't play at the Wankhede for the final test against New Zealand? Was Is there a sense whether that was his call to rest or whether that was a team call? I would imagine it would be a joint call. I think uh, Jaspreet, as we all know, came back off a, a long back injury. Uh, he performed very well in the T20 World Cup and the uh, series against Bangladesh. The wickets weren't very conducive, as we all know, for his bowling in the the first two games. I think it was just a question of resting him uh, and making sure that uh, with Shami out of the equation, India weren't going to take any chances with their spearhead. And knowing the wicket they had prepared, I suppose they they felt that uh, it was not necessary to expose Jaspreet to another three or four days of extreme heat and humidity in Mumbai just ahead of the trip down under. This is a nation that's won its last two Red Bull series here in Australia. I mean, how much belief will they be taking from those experiences as they look to write what is uh, appearing to be a ship that's lost its course somewhat? Uh, yes, I, I would not disagree with your, your last comment. I think they do need to you know, steer themselves back on course. They will take some, uh, some confidence from that shore particularly the last series. But remember that the last series was in itself a a Hollywood film, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, The number of injuries, the number of players who had never anticipated wearing whites, the number of debuts that happened, the test at the Gabba. Hazelwood goes in and he gets a full toss and he drives it, threw it off. It's going down towards the boundary. It's going to go for four. It's all over. India have won. India have won magnificently. The injured defiance of Ashwin and Vihari in Sydney just before that. All of those, I think, are events that certainly are unlikely to repeat themselves in the same manner. Those are fairy tales, really. 
And I think it's going to need solid cricket with both bat and ball and in the field. It is not a very different Australian side. I mean, we talk about India's core now aging. So is the case with Australia. I mean, there's no Warner now. We read about a lot of debate about who's going to open the batting. It looks like Smith is going to drop down. Uh, Lyon, probably his last series against India. All of those, uh, Stark and, and Hazelwood and Pat Cummins, who are in their own right heroes in, in India. So it's going to be a tussle, I think, between endurance, mental strength and the conditions, not to forget the crowds in Australia. There's a sense, Prakash, I think, with Australian cricket fans, that when they look to the way India has lost this series in India, that they're vulnerable. But I think we often fail to look at our own backyard and our top six, by and large, has struggled over the recent journey in Test Match cricket. From an Indian fan's perspective, do they feel that Australia are actually ripe for opportunity here? You know, to be honest with you, uh, since Rahul Dravid had taken over, maybe even during Ravi Shastri's time at coach, one of the interesting narratives that's emerged out of the Indian team has always been about, look, control the controllables. What can we do? Uh, where can we improve? Are there chinks in the opposition's armor that you could sort of exploit? There has been very little public conversation about we're going to do this or we're going to do that or we're going to target this player in this manner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I therefore feel that the, the Indian team management will look at this as a series where they know they can win. Can they consistently deliver over a period of five test matches with breaks in between? That, I think, will be the, the debate and discussion. Endurance and strength of players themselves. How are they shaping up? And of course, on the Australian side, there will be a very, very healthy dose of respect for the likes of Smith and Labushain. Not to forget the, the fast bowling quartet and, of course, that great man, Nathan Lyon. Lyon around the wicket. Case Bright looking to sweep. Top edge. Caught. Catch taken by Steve Smith. The keeper's out. Kaz Barat goes. And India is seven down. Nathan Lyon's got a five-wicket haul again in Delhi. So it's going to be a, a series, I think, which will be punctuated by the inevitable few incidents here and there. Let's hope it's played in the same spirit as the last one was, where there were enough jokes caught on stump mic, but nothing got out of hand. And I think the Australians now know that uh, going out and saying too many things up front isn't necessarily the way to get one past the Indians. So there will be a lot of healthy respect and uh, they will be looking at uh, playing their A game for as many of those five tests as they possibly can to try and restore the confidence that has not just been shaken, but has received a brute of a, of a hit in the face, if you will, for the Indian fans here. We are closing in on what is going to be a highly anticipated first test. Prakash, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Headlines. Staying with cricket and Nathan McSweeney will open the batting for the first time in his career as the case builds for him to open the batting for Australia in the first test with India. It'll be the South Australian and Marcus Harris opening for Australia AV India A at the MCG from Thursday. Cam Bancroft at three, Sam Constas at four, which kind of feels like a pseudo pecking order right now. The man they're all hoping to replace, kind of, is David Warner. He's got his own victory, confirmed as Sydney Thunder captain for the Big Bash season. That's significant because he was once banned from cricket leadership off the back of Sandpaper Gate. You might have heard of it. That finding was overturned last month, and now he's back in domestic cricket in a skipper capacity. You know the rolling argument over grand final time slots in the AFL? Daytime v. Nighttime v. Twilight. It can be a bit tedious, can't it? Well, the AFLW, they're not mucking around. They've confirmed their decider will be played at night. The league has booked in venues across the country. Princess Park will be the pick if the game is in Victoria. Novak Djokovic, meanwhile, has pulled out of the ATP finals in Turin due to a mystery injury, and that means Alex Demonor is into the field of eight for the lucrative event. He's the first Aussie to take part since Leighton Hewitt. The event's prize pool, 23 million Australian dollars. Nice work, if you can get it. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily, produced by Poppy Penny. Remember her? She's back with a tan and jet lag. Welcome, Poppy. Thanks to Fox Cricket, the BCCI, and the ICC for the extra audio used in this episode. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio, and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.